going on guys? Uh, this is my friend Nick. Uh, he's the guy from the last video that we just actually shot today. That's why I'm wearing the same clothes. Uh, he was the film guy for that. And what I'm really excited to introduce is this is his 1968 Roadrunner, which I will now let him talk about. It's a 68 Roadrunner. Um, came from the factory with a 383 7273 speed auto. And now it's got a junk 440 out of a motorhome that's been punched and stroked to a 496. And it's got an 833 four speed out of something. I don't know what, but it works. Um, and it's a rust bucket. So uh, we'll, we'll probably do some videos on B body floor pan replacement. Um, we might do something on, uh, on crash box repair if the, uh, the transmission cross member on the driver's side needs the same repairs the passenger side did because it needed a little bit of work on the inside and there's not much information out there on, on that kind of stuff. If anyone needs to know how to, how to actually replace that, there is no stamp component for it. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll get it on the road and have some good times. <laughs> body so the same chassis as, as any, any Dodge Charger like old Dodge Charger or Dodge Coronet uh, from the Velvet Deer all this um, all Mopars from this generation have really really bad issues with rust and I mean all old cars kind of have issues with rust but it's particularly bad with these because they are very large unibody cars and there is a lot of a lot of twisting a lot of flexing that, that went on from, from the factory I mean, the factory spot wells were kind of kind of far spaced out and they weren't really the strongest thing I did a lot of the ones that I ground out of this car had, had all kind of air pockets in them and they're porous and they're just a mess so um, let's come over here First thing that you want to do if you get one of these cars that needs floor pans is make sure that the whole car is squared. This car was not. This car had about an inch of difference from the front right corner to the back left and it twisted like that. And um, the way that we squared the car was just taking basic measurements from the frame rails on each side down to the ground, making sure it's on, on a perfectly level surface. and cut the floor pans out of it and kind of like gave it room and use jacks to flex it back the other way. All right, so when I got this car, it was twisted kind of bad. Um, it, it had actually been torqued kind of like that. So the, the front right corner and the rear left corner were higher than the other corner of the car. And um, disclaimer, all of this is not necessarily the exact right way to do these things. I mean, this is not a concourse restoration. This is gonna be a hot rod. If you want to do all of this as best as possible, you need to get a one-piece center pan, which we're replacing this with the, uh, the strips from A and B that come in two pieces. They don't include the tunnel, so we're using the factory tunnel because it's not damaged. Um, but the first thing, you need to do with one of these cars. You don't want to just let the thing sit on like with its full weight on the suspension and hack the floors out and start welding on it because it will let the center of the car slump and then you will not end up with a straight car. So with this, we didn't, the best way to do it would be to have it put on a frame table and make sure it's straightened and, and like keep it on a rotisserie as, as you're welding things into it. We don't have that kind of stuff we're dealing with with pretty much hand tools and stuff that you have in, in your normal garage. So the thing's set up on several sets, sets of jack stands. Um, we, we made relief cuts and let the chassis settle to where most of the frame rails measure to the ground about the same and everything's pretty much squared with the other side. Um, and then the first pans, if you're doing this with, with the AMD short pans, and the biggest problem with doing like the, the main pan that includes the tunnel is it's fine if, you're, if you have a convertible car. If you have a convertible car, you can put the whole pan down in it just fine. Um, and honestly, if you have like an open window coupe, whatever the terminology for that is, um, it, it's not impossible to do the single main pan. 
but this is this is a pillar coupe car so we have these pillars right here that are not in all b bodies the windows don't roll down they open out and this is not removable it doesn't roll it doesn't do anything so the pans have to be small enough to slip in with that there so you can't just take one huge pan and lay it in here without removing the transmission cross and then pulling the drivetrain out of the car so you're using two individual pans and because of that they can kind of lay differently as you're trying to lay them with the tunnel so what's important is you put the rear pans if you're replacing the rears first or you leave your if your originals aren't rusty keep them undamaged make sure you just carefully separate the spot welds and grind the spot welds off of the bottoms of these pans because these will be over top of your front pans but these are welded solidly to the frame rails right here there's this flat spot that you've got to weld to and because of that that determines where this is going to sit and this determines where your main floor pan needs to be so you need to do these first and i i feel like it was easier to do this one first because this one's the one that underlays and then you can slip this one in and that one kind of pins it to the top of this also what's important whenever i started this this car's been in limbo for a little while so um whenever i started this project amd which is the main sheet metal reproduction company for for mopars um or at least the, the most accessible one they did not offer replacements for this pin which goes over in between the tubs and, and stops where the trunk pan starts so whenever i started it was pertinent to either save this flange right here that these pans weld under or cut it out and, and run a bead on a strip and make a strip that can weld over top of these pans so it, it at least goes together the right way but now we have these in um, we're going to pin the tunnel to this which will show us where the sides of our pans need to lay and where they're going to have to be bled into this this tunnel so this is our passenger side pan um it's already been drilled out we marked everything out on the back for where the uh, where the frame rails are here and here where they meet um, where the uh, the seat supports are where they come off of the rocker and um, if, you've, if you've ever seen how one of these cars is put together from the factory uh, this probably seems very very excessive um, we we have definitely twice as many spot welds drilled out than, than they put in these cars from the factory maybe maybe even close to three times as many it's, it's a yeah, lot I think it is too. yeah yeah from from factory it was like probably about two two and a half inches from from weld to weld but also these cars didn't really hold together well i mean you can you can see videos of stock bodies taking off and they they twist really bad and then whenever rust starts and eats a couple of those spot welds in a certain place the floor pan will start to sag and we want this to be a very solid car um, so we're, we're overdoing it on the spot welds it's going to have subframe connectors um, probably going to have a cage eventually we just want this thing to be as rigid as you can get a B body by the end of this but um, we'll probably do a few more videos on this uh, show you all like how, how to actually mark this out on the driver's side. Once we start cutting it out, we'll show you what to watch for whenever you're trying to separate the floor pan from the firewall, because that's a little bit of a problem area. Um, and how to, how to get it off the torque box without destroying like the top fold of the torque box, because that's kind of annoying to do as well. And there's not a lot of videos out there on this stuff. But uh, yeah, that's what we'll be doing with this. Cool guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, like Nick said, There'll definitely be more to come, definitely a part two to finish down his floor pan because this car has been in his garage too long and we need to get this back on the road and start daily driving it.